I walked up to me and said, uh, hey, buddy, uh, could you get me a drink? So I'm in trouble. I might start serving drinks for Harry later this evening. That's the way it's going, and we hope to keep you updated on the situation here. All right, Bob, I've heard that same line 30 times so far tonight. Anyway, the man who's going to tie it all together for us here tonight is the same guy who gets it done game in and game out for WGN and the Cubs. That was our award-winning producer-director, Arnie Harris, and for him, this isn't just another game either. Schmidt waving. One. Double play. Get it, Joe. Three. All right. Give me a picture, Donnie. Stay there, Bruce. Four. We'll squeeze four. Stay with him, Bruce. Punch four to the net. Stay there, Brucey. Squeeze four. If Arnie Harris sounds slightly subdued in the TV truck, consider that he's seen just about everything in 22 years of calling the shots at Cub games for Channel 9. But he's never seen a night game at Wrigley Field. I'm ready, Danny. I wish it was over. I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun, but uh, the phone hasn't stopped ringing. Uh, but I'm, I am. I'm looking forward to it. I'm, uh, I was out here the first night, uh, Monday night, when they put the lights on, and I was impressed. I thought the lighting was great. The corners were a little dark, but uh, they're even dark here in the daylight. It should, be a, it should be a great event. Last time the Cubs and WGN married up for an event of this scope, the Cubs were clinching a division title in 84. From the director's chair, tonight is even bigger. Where does this game fit in as far as you're concerned and what you've done at Wrigley Field for Channel 9? Well, I think right to the top. I, you know, the 84 uh, uh, pennant clincher was pretty good. But rating-wise, this, I'm sure, will parallel that. And I think uh, uh, because it's four, year later, uh, four years later with more people maybe watching, more sets available, more people watching on cable, I would say it's probably, it'll probably be the most watched show that I've ever done, and I'm looking forward to that. Big night for Arnie Harris tonight and a big night for all of us at WGN, and we're so happy that you've been able to join us for it. Uh, the weather so far, it's still holding off. A little dark back to the west, but right now it's not raining, and we hope it won't. We'll leave you right now with a little bit of music from Steve Goodman, a man who was a great Cub fan in his life, and I know he would have enjoyed being at this game tonight. So for now, stay tuned. I'm Dan Rohn at Wrigley Field. We'll see you later. Lights On was brought to you in part by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chrysler Plymouth dealer and by Nissan Cars and Trucks, built for the most important race of all, the human race. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. I don't care if I never get back. It's root, root, root for the home team. And if they don't win, what else is new? It's one, two, three strikes, you're out. At the old ball game, play it, Jethro. Any second now, Hyundai's make and tracks clearance is going to begin. And your Hyundai dealer will start clearing out the entire stock of 88 Excels. A huge selection, three doors, four doors, and five doors. Sedans and hatchbacks, priced as low as $53.95. And during the make and tracks clearance, there'll be some real deals. So go see your Hyundai dealer now. Well, the going's good. For the Chicagoland Hyundai dealer nearest you, call 1-800-826-CARS. This is WGN-TV Channel 9, reminding you to take time out for your kids today. You'll be glad you did, for kids' sake. Lead Off Man is brought to you in part by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers. Go with the driving force. And Amoco Ultimate Lead-Free Premium, Amoco. 
your car knows. Steve Stone up in the booth in lighted and very hot Wrigley Field. In 1935, the Cubs played the third night game ever played, and they won that one against the Cincinnati Reds at Old Crosley Field. And it took them three years, till 1938, till a man by the name of Joe Marty hit the first home run in a Chicago Cubs uniform. The Cubs won that one also. 50 years ago, the first home run by a Chicago Cub at night. Who's going to be the man tonight? Andre Dawson? Pretty good guess. Maybe Rafael Palmero or Mark Grace. What a night for Mark Grace. They hit his first home run in Wrigley Field. Under the lights. So far the rain is holding off. Hopefully that'll be for some time because it looks ominous to the west. It's an exciting night here. The stands packed with people. Standing room only and they're standing everywhere. In fact, Harry is standing right over there. He's waiting to go on and he's got a lot of interesting things for you today. And we have an interesting show for you. We have a lot of reactions around the league. Players, managers, coaches, just exactly what it's going to be like in Wrigley Field tonight. A lot of guys who played here, a lot of guys who managed here, a lot of guys who coached here, some guys who never put on a Cub uniform, but many former Cubs will tell you just exactly what it's going to feel like to be down on the field for the first night game. 8 8 88. Something to remember. And stay with us. We'll be back and we'll hear from the players after these messages. Uh, Jim Fry did uh, offer good advice to me to be more aggressive, uh, to hit for more power. So I think just the fact that uh, he wanted me to go for power uh, just gave me a lot of confidence. I don't swing for the fences every time up. It's just nice to know that I have that extra power when I need it. In America, I discover new and wonderful things every day. Look, now Amico Ultimate has 93 octanes. That's a lot of octanes. Take the one tank test and try them for yourself. Just fill up with new 93 octane engine cleaning Amico Ultimate. You'll feel our 93 octane acceleration and less engine knock and run on. It's easy to take the Amico one tank test. The hard part is to find the tank. <laughs> Ah, another beautiful Monday. Coast, the scent opens your eyes. Coast of lava, and you realize that coast is the way to make you feel alive. Coast, feel alive. <laughs> sure beats snow. Feel alive. The comments are varied, but with the same recurrent theme. What a great night it's going to be tonight in Wrigley Field. And the first man to kick it off, former Cub outfielder Keith Moreland. Well, I think the first thing, uh, in 1982 when I came here, uh, we all talked about the fact that we didn't think anybody could be competitive playing uh, day baseball all the time. So I, my personal feelings is I think over the future and the long haul, night baseball is only going to help the organization and the Cub Ball Club be better prepared to come out and stay with the schedule of uh, 162 games and be able to compete on a better basis. It's definitely going to be different. We know that. Uh, I think that uh, it, was a, it was something that was going to come and going to happen because of the playoffs in the World Series as the Cubs, uh, you know, started to perform better after when I left and the other people. But uh, it was something that had to be done. Uh, as far as the fan reaction, I don't know. You know, this ballpark's got tremendous char charisma, Steve. And like today, we got a full house in here. And when the Cubs are playing well, the people are going to come out. But it's going to give a chance probably for those people at home uh, in the evening to watch the Cubs. And it's going to be an exciting thing. I know my friend Yosh Kalano, the equipment manager, I don't think he likes it, but... And after all, I, I, they probably had to check with him first before they did this. But all in all, uh, you know, I wish that uh, I was in the area and I was off that day because I would definitely come on August the 8th. It's going to be an exciting day. It's going to be history. And uh, another thing, if I may add this, from the ball player standpoint, I think some of these uh, day, day games that are it's over, extremely warm, when you play in the evening, I think that that player or players are going to catch a break. They'll feel stronger. It's going to be an interesting thing. And 
I know it'll be a sellout the eighth and I just uh, the only bad thing about it is the restaurants are going to take a beat and Tommy Lasorda is not going to like that. But anyway, uh, I think it was a great nice thing to happen. And, you know, uh, I hope I'm still around to experience a night game in Wrigley Field because like you said, I've done it all the other ways and I'd like to come in here and just one game and see what it's like and I hope I'm still around to do that. Well, you know, the thing about it is uh, when you come to Wrigley Field, to me, it's tradition. It's a ballpark that everybody loves, not only the home team, but the visiting team. And then to see that they're going to put lights here and uh, play night baseball, it's a little tough to understand that because this is the one thing, the one park that we could really hold on to and say baseball is supposed to be a game played in the daytime, and this is the only thing that we had to remember. Now it's gone. But, hey, it was inevitable. It had to happen. Probably the best thing. But I still like to come to Wrigley Field, see a day game, and play in this beautiful ballpark. I think it's uh, going to be mixed. I think uh, it's going to be nice to be able to play some games in the evening instead of during the heat of the day. You know how hot it can get in this ballpark during the day in the summer months. But it's also going to be different. Uh, it's real easy to, to get into a routine when you're at home playing every game at the same time. Now they're going to have a night game. They're going to have to get up early to play a day game the next day. And it, it, uh, it's adjustment that you have to make continually during the year when you mix in night games and day games. And I think overall it will probably be beneficial for the players. Well, it's going to be real exciting. Uh, the people of Chicago have waited a long time for this. And uh, finally the day is here. <laughs> and. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, it's exciting for them, and uh, it's going to be exciting for us. So there's an all-star game-type, playoff-type atmosphere here, and uh, the players are real excited about it. Well, Ralph Kiner, even though I know the answer to this, what, <laughs> what is your feeling about nice night baseball at Wrigley Field? I think it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> the last bastion of what baseball should be, daylight and grass, and it's going down the drain when they put lights in there. But you know, Tim, the most significant change I think that the Cubs have made goes back to 1953. In 1953, they took the fans out of that center field area and they put that backdrop in where you can see the ball. Before that, it was a real pitcher's ballpark. After that, it became a hitter's ballpark. And I think that's a more important change as far as the players are concerned than the lights. And I wonder what the uh, night baseball will do to the winds of Wrigley Field. I know you like it at night. Well, I'll guarantee you, I prefer night baseball. I think as far as the Cubs are concerned, the Cubs are going to be much better off late in the season, even though they're going to play, what, a maximum of 18 games in the night. But I think night baseball revives you. I think you're more rested for night baseball, and that goes for the players and the broadcasters. I always enjoyed night baseball, and, and to be honest with you, I saw the ball better at night, and I think that one of the reasons was because I was more rested. Well, one thing for sure, Tim, the restaurants in Chicago are going to lose an awful lot of business. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, that's Ralph Kiner and, and me. I'm Tim McCarver. That's our view on night baseball at Wrigley Field. Now let's see what Lee Elia, the manager of the Philadelphia Phillies, has to say about nice, night baseball. Well, I, I know from being a Cub as a player and having the pleasure of managing that ball club that, that again, the Chicago fans uh, and the Chicago organization is going to put together a, another great event in their history, and uh, that'll be the night game on August the 8th. And I'm, as an individual, extremely flattered to uh, to have the opportunity to be on the other side of the field on that night. Uh, there's been so much greatness, if that's the right word, uh, so much history that has prevailed in, in the Chicago area with the Chicago Cubs for many, many years. This is just another plus uh, in, in this regard to, to uh, what's going to be a, a great event. It's a historical day. There's no question about it. I think when you, uh, when you weigh the fact that there's probably uh, some people that are not happy with night baseball, and then there's so many more that probably would like to have it, Regardless of, of whatever feelings might transpire between those people, this is still history in the making, and uh, myself and the organization are flattered that we have the opportunity to be a part of it next Monday night. 
It certainly is history in the making and it's only fitting that the Philadelphia Phillies who provided the opposition in the first night game provide the opposition tonight the first night game ever in Wrigley Field. Stay with us because after these messages we'll be back with more of the pregame festivities. When the big automakers need information fast, Ameritech is there. We're there when the nation's top retailers need to transmit data. Ameritech is there for nearly 25% of the Fortune 500 companies, 450 institutions of higher learning, and a million businesses. Moving information for the most information-intense region of the country. When it comes to communications in the Midwest, we pull it all together. Ameritech. Solutions that work. When 87 rolled around, I knew exactly where I wanted to be. So I just did everything within my power to get there. Now I'm finally having fun doing what I do. In fact, I'm having so much fun, it's like I'm making up for lost time. Cubs manager Don Zimmer for Land of Lincoln. After 40 years, I know a lot about baseball. But I'm no expert when it comes to finances. So I talk to the experts at Land of Lincoln Savings and Loan. Lincoln's lineup includes free checking that earns me interest. Savings, CDs, consumer loans, and home mortgages. In fact, with a home mortgage from Lincoln, you get the home team advantage. Lincoln offers low rates and mortgage approval in as little as 10 days. Their free mortgage pre-approval even lets you know what price range of homes to shop in. For your financial needs, play ball with the best team in the land. Land of Lincoln. Lincoln. For your financial needs or to ask about our free Cubby Bear offer, dial Lincoln. Land of Lincoln. Look at us now. A member of the Land of Lincoln Financial Services Network. And now Wayne Mesmer with America the Beautiful. To the Cubs, Wayne Mesmer. And now another thrilling part of the program, and that's the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. And they're going to play the Star Spangled Banner. What a night in Chicago, a night where Rick Sutcliffe goes against Kevin Gross, a night when the lights came on for the first time. And now the Chicago Symphony Orchestra with our national anthem.
back with a look at the final pregame ceremonies after these messages. The key to unlocking a great deal on a new car is timing. And there's no better time to find one than right now. That's right now during Chevy's year-end clearance sale, where the lowest prices of the year are within your reach. Plus, you can save hundreds more on option packages and cash rebates on top of that. So, if you've been looking for the best deal on a new car, the search is over. But hurry, because the selections have never been better. And at prices this low, they're moving fast. In America, I discover new and wonderful things every day. Look, now Amico Ultimate has 93 octanes. That's a lot of octanes. Take the one tank test and try them for yourself. Just fill up with new 93 octane engine cleaning Amico Ultimate. You'll feel our 93 octane acceleration and less engine knock and run on. It's easy to take the Amico one tank test. The hard part is to find the tank. <laughs> Imagine winning two million bucks. Why, getting what you've always wanted would be a piece of cake. You could build a new home, buy a new car, pick out a new set of furniture. You could have a huge TV and even bigger sound system. Piano in the front room and a pool out in back. You could buy a diamond for the wife, an education for the kids, a boat for the weekends, and a place for the summer. And even after you bought everything you ever wanted, you'd probably have at least a million bucks left over. But that's the beauty of the two million bucks instant game. You can eat your cake and have it too. You've seen it all on WGN-TV, and now it's Sutcliffe against Gross. Harry Carey coming back. Stay tuned for baseball. Lead-off man was brought to you in part by Amoco, ultimate lead-free premium. Amoco, your car knows. And your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers. Go with a driving force. Mexico. Come to where the sun warms your spirit and the people warm your heart. Come, feel the warmth of Mexico. Come on, Dad, you bought this Toyota Camry because it's got a new V6. No, no, the room. Dad, you did buy it because it's got a V6. No, I bought it because I've wanted an affordable Camry for years. Charlie. No, really, I bought it because you like to look good going to church. Charlie. I bought it because Morning, Reverend. Was it a V6? The powerful new Camry V6. Toyota quality. Who could ask for anything more? Is he here? Yeah. This was no ordinary man. How is he gonna breathe? <laughs> he isn't. Don't think of Jacques as a human being. He's from another world. For he was a man about to discover the secret of the Big Blue. Opens August 19th at a theater near you. Hold it. Ho, ho, ho. So you're going to finally meet Cindy, huh? Tonight. Good. So first impressions are very important. I think. Okay. Now, imagine. Lights are low. The music's soft. Knock the door. The door opens up. Somebody's out there doing this. What is this? She's got dandruff? No, you have dandruff. No. Yes, you do. I shampoo every day. If you shampoo your brains out with regular shampoo, shampoo wouldn't matter. Your brains out? Yeah, well, so use that. Head and shoulders? Works for me, my friend. But you don't have to end Exacto mundo! <laughs> Head and shoulders. Because you never get a second chance to make a first impression.
We're going to talk to Bill Murray, the great star, following this message. I think of you. Participating advertisers in Cubs baseball are Budweiser, the king of beers, and proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Buick, this great American pastime is brought to you by Buick, the great American road car and your better Buick dealers. United Airlines, the official airline of the Chicago Cubs. Come fly the friendly skies. Pepsi Cola, the choice of a new generation. Unical 76, we invite you to go with the spirit, the spirit of 76. The Chicago Tribune, a great city deserves a great newspaper. True Value Hardware, your store of first choice. Canon, the official camera of the Chicago Cubs. Nissan Cars and Trucks, built for the most important race of all, the human race. Budweiser, super fast, ice cold. The hottest ticket in town is ice cold. Super fast. Freddie Jackson, Gladys Knight and the Pips, The Deal, Loris Day, and Tina Marie. On one concert ticket for the first time at Rosemont Horizon, Friday, August 19th. Tickets for the Budweiser Superfest are on sale now. Be there. True Value Hardware stores present a bright young drill team from Black & Decker, the Bullet 11-piece bit set. Up now, the exclusive Pilot Point. It starts in metal without walking, and large flutes clear the whole path. It's going, going deep into the wood. The Black & Decker Bullet Set, the revolutionary drill bits, only $12.99 at participating True Value Hardware stores and home centers. Seventy-five feet. Sixteen thousand feet. Four hundred miles. Eighteen feet. Hello again, everybody. Harry Carey at Wrigley Field on this noteworthy night, indeed. Eight, eight, eighty-eight. That's the date. And this buds for you, Bill Murray. Dying under these lights until you handed me this thing. Right? It's such a pleasure to see you, especially on a noteworthy event like this one. Well, I don't know how I feel about night baseball. It's great in the minor leagues, but it's someplace else to go in town besides your restaurant, which is a good thing. <laughs> you know, uh, how's your mother, by the way? My mother is. Uh, she's off the booze, real it's pretty, but she's doing really well. She's doing great. That bit you put on when you were when I was sick and you were on and did such a great job. The bit you did about your mother, among other things. I think it should be a special cassette. You ought to sell about 10 million of them. Well, uh, I've got uh, 200,000 of my own, which I'm willing to unload for some sort of a price. But uh, my mother really wants too big a percentage, so I'm keeping them in, a in the garage right now at home. Uh, have you thought about broadcasting baseball as something after you're tired of uh, being a great star of movies, stage, 
television, screen, whatever you have. I think when I completely lose my mind here, I'm going to step right up into your spot here in the booth. There's no doubt about you being a Cub, a true Cub fan, is there? Well, I went with the blue and white tonight, figuring I could look like the ground crew in case I got thrown out, I could get back in. It's really beautiful. It's the most beautiful park in the world, and it's it's pretty under the lights, too. That's what I was hoping. And tell me, Bill, where are you making your own now, in Hollywood or in New York? Well, I make it in New York. What's the, what's happening in your career? Anything new? Uh, well, I made a movie called Scrooge that's going to come out. Scrooge. I'll bet you you've got to be Scrooge. Yes, that's right. And that's I would right. imagine that's hilariously funny. You have a vivid imagination, Harry. You really do. It better be funny. There's going to be big trouble for me. Yeah. Bill, good to see you. Stick good around you, for a little while. I know it's warm up here. Okay. Bill Murray, a priceless guy. Don't go away now because we're going to be back with the first night baseball game ever played at Wrigley Field. Coming up in a moment. What exactly does Nissan mean by hard body truck? Well, say you want to haul some firewood. Your Chicagoland Nissan dealers are saluting night baseball at Wrigley Field. Come take a test drive at any participating dealer and get a commemorative t-shirt and an official Major League Baseball. But hurry, or you'll be left in the dark. Who's got the juice? Got it. Got it. Don't got it. Got it. Got it. Don't got it. Yeah. Got it. Uh-uh. Ain't got it. Who's got the juice? Got it. Slice. You got the juice. Taste it. Yeah. You got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Don't. Don't got it. Taste the diet slice. Either you got it or you don't. me your phone rough ride huh i'll be calling a cab stan it was just a couple of glitches in my engine glitches <laughs> excuse me yeah. coffee cup coffee thank you i think it's just clogged fuel injectors are they hard to fix you are fixing them 76 gasoline start cleaning port fuel injectors from the very first thankful and keep them clean stan good news it was just my fuel injectors the spirit of 76 uh village cab 555 five, five, eight thousand you guys, uh, things in the bleachers aren't different than they are during day. Back this morning to get in here, right? Well, you know, you a good seat. No shirt. Did you get one there in the green? Yeah, that's what we have, right there. Did you get one on each side? No. Only the one. Well, we're here live at Harry Carey's. Dan Wood was having some audio problems. Harry, I hope you can hear the crowd here at your establishment. Holy cow! Well, that's a special message for you, Harry, here from the gang here at your location where they're autographing and auctioning off Andre Dawson T-shirts and Billy Williams bats and the whole works. Back to you, Harry. All right, Bob Jordan. Thank you. Hello again, everybody, with Steve Stone, Harry Carey. Bill Murray is with us, too. Here are the lineups, first of all, for tonight's game. For the Philly, as you look at Rick Sutcliffe, Bradley in left, Thompson in center, Sam Well at second, Schmidt at third, Parrish the catcher, James in right, Jordan at first, Jelts at short, Gross the pitcher. And for the Chicago Cubs, Webster in center, Sandberg at second, Grace at first, Dawson in right, Palmero and left, Law at third, the first pitch of the ball game. Look at the lights flickering all over Wrigley Field. Barry Hill catching, Dunstan and Dunson Sharp, Sutcliffe pitching. And here we go. This game is underway with Phil Bradley with a count of ball one. Sutcliffe's fifth. He fouls it out of play. Hey, are those flickering lights going to go on all the time? I, I imagine some of the hitters might com complain about it. Well, as long as Phil doesn't complain, I'm going to win there. I think it's important. All right, one ball, one strike. The Phillies lead in the series, Bill. Two games to one. Yeah, I saw it yesterday. <laughs> the pitch. A little bit high. 
Where do all those lights flicker from, Arnie? All over the ballpark. Those are people with flash cameras, Harry, trying to get a piece of history here at Wrigley Field tonight. Two balls and the strike. There's the drive. Way back. It's gone. It's out of here. Sam, Phil Bradley. It's a home run. The first man up. His sixth home run of the year. And he'll remember the first night game ever played at Wrigley Field, especially after that home run. Well, wait, we haven't batted yet. <laughs> Maybe the wind's blowing out. The wind is blowing nine miles an hour out to left center. The sixth home run of the year for Brad Bradley. RBI number 34. Watch it again. Here's Thompson. A ground ball. Nice play by Law. Throws him out. Let, there's a home out on onto Waveland Avenue. Boy, look at those rooftops. Are they heavily populated tonight? Well, Harry, they said it would cool off at night, and they were right. It's cooled off to 91 degrees at game time. It's a delightful evening. <laughs> Why are you so ringing wet, Steve? Because of the delightful evening, Harry. I'm not quite as wet as Eric Gregg is going to be behind the plate before this one's over. Yeah, but he doesn't have a tuxedo on. <laughs> There's the pit swung and miss. Well, let's not play. Eric Gregg is looking good. He is looking very good. He's lost about 40 pounds. Eric? You look fantastic. <laughs> One strike and nothing. You think he changed his wardrobe with the new look, but he's still in the same gray pants and blue shirt. So, well, Juan Samuel takes the pitch high. One to nothing, Phillies. Boy, if uh, if the lights were turned on before your TV set was turned on, you might have missed the first home run of the of the game. Foul back out of play. One and two on Samuel. Three out of 13 in the series. This is Rick Sutcliffe's 22nd start of the year, his fourth against the Phillies. He's two and one this year against Philadelphia, seven and six lifetime. Last time out against New York, he threw a fine ball game going the distance, giving up seven hits and one earned run. He almost didn't start this game. He's had some back problems, and Mike Bilecki was ready to take over if Rick Sutcliffe couldn't go. Instead, Bilecki will go tomorrow night. One ball, two strike. Low outside, ball two. You'll Bradley. hear those lottery numbers uh, again following the, the ball game. And we'll flash them to you a number of times. I hope you won. Two balls, two strikes. You think a lot of people bought 888 today? Yeah. I would imagine a few. A bouncing ball foul. One thing about it, though. I guess Arnie looked all over for a horse with the number 88, but I, I don't believe there are any horses like that around. <laughs> There's Don Zimmer. One out, one in. Bradley opened the ball game with a home run. The first night, first home run hit at nighttime at Wrigley Field. There's the mayor, Mayor Sawyer, and the commissioner of baseball, Mr. Obernoff. The pitch. There's a high fly ball going to be caught. Mitch Webster. Two and out. And here's Mike Schmidt. He's hit many a home run in the daytime at Wrigley Field. This is the first time he'll bat at night. Take a look around the field. It looks very bright in the outfield. The only shadows are in the corners, but there are shadows in the corners under the sunlight, too. So nothing different about that. I think one thing different though you you can't see the you can't identify some of the people in front row seats as you normally could. It is a little darker in the stand. Schmidt takes a strike call. See the lining is even and while there's a little shadow in the corners it, the light is uh, very visible. On oh, one the count. Two out one in. A high pop foul. Might be caught. M Mark Grace. Grace takes care of Schmidt's pop foul. One run, one hit. Nobody left. 
We go in the bottom of the first. The Phillies lead one to nothing. Meet the legends and celebrate the history of Channel 9 at the Museum of Broadcast Communications. For more information, call 987-1500. You've got the magic touch. Ooh. It makes me glow so much. Ooh. It casts the spell. Ooh. It rings a bell. The magic touch. This weekend, feel the Hyatt Touch. The Magic Touch. Couldn't tell anybody my problem. Couldn't tell my boss I don't feel like coming to work because I'm constipated. Some excuse. What's he going to say? Hey, take a laxative. Sure. Then get on the bus and hope that it doesn't kick in? <laughs> then one simple idea changed my life. Daily fiber therapy, Metamucil fiber therapy. See, fiber helps keep you regular, but I wasn't getting enough. Now I get plenty. And Metamucil fiber won't irritate your system like a harsh chemical laxative. Works with your body safely, naturally. So with Metamucil every day, I got regular and stayed regular. Metamucil, and you could stay regular for the rest of your life. Now available in a new larger economy size. Okay, last time. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Energize with orange or lemon breakthrough. Weeder sugar-free sports drink, 996. Sportmart guarantees Weeder for less. Sportmart for the way you play. Carry back at Wrigley Field. And what a beautiful sight it is. Bill Murray's sitting with us. Bill, you had to really change your personality around in order to play a, a role like Scrooge, huh? No, it wasn't that hard, Harry. I just uh, I just went without breakfast. I just ate very late, and that's all it took. I was cranky until I had breakfast, and I wouldn't eat until late, until like 5 or 6 in the afternoon. Yeah, I get through. Ground ball headed for center. Nick Fletcher. The first night game comes out of the batting slump with a solid single in the center field. And there's a good beginning. Webster hitting 250 for the year. Starts off with a single to center. They Look sit right it. up the middle. Look who's coming on the field. I think this is Morgana. It's Morgana. She wants to kiss Sandberg. The field, the field guards, the management control people, intercept her. Right by Juan Samuel, and here you have to give that usher a lot of credit. He caught Morgana from behind. He ran her down and had a big head start on him. Well, I can't say much for his imagination <laughs> at all. I couldn't see anything, Harry. I lost her in the lights. <laughs> 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 All right, Webster's at first. She was aiming for Ryan Sandberg. She got almost to the pitcher's mound when she was intercepted. All right, Webster. Mitch Webster on at first. Here's Ryan Sandberg hitting 254. Three out of 11 in the series. Kevin Gross on the hill. One ball, no strikes. The Cubs have hit Kevin Gross pretty well over the course of his career. He's four and seven lifetime against Chicago with a 4.74 ERA. This year he started one game against them. The Cubs hit him pretty well. Six and two thirds innings, six earned runs on eight hits. That's terrible news. Ooh, Ooh, swings a drive, deep get left field, way up, back. It might be. The 
Home run number 12 for Rhino. RBIs 45 and 46. He got it up in the wind. The wind is blowing to left field, and the Cubs are on top that quickly. In 1938, it was Joe Marty with the first Cub home run under the lights. Ryan Sandberg, 50 years later, takes him deep. Getting a standing ovation. His 12th home run of the year. And the Cubs lead 2 to 1. And I am sure Bill Murray is right now coming out to take the ball. I'm sure Bill Murray pulling for the ball to go into the stand as all that blew it over. Who says a hot wind blows nobody some good? I like these lights. I like them. <laughs> Eric, Eric Craig, the home plate umpire, made him come out of the dugout. That's great. Two to one in favor of the Cub. Oh, here now is Grace. Fouls it back. He's going to New York and Pittsburgh. No score at the end of two. Atlanta leads the Giants. One nothing at the end of one. Mark Grace is five for seven this year against Kevin Gross. He's hit him well, and maybe he'll hit his first home run in Wrigley Field this year. The previous five have been on the road. Grace, four out of 12 in this series. Play by Ricky Jordan. A screamer, a bullet hit, hit it to the right field corner, and Jordan made the leaping cut. One out. So far, nobody around home plate is having problems with the lights. And let's watch the home run again. Ryan Sandberg gets a fastball down, he gets it up in the wind, and the Chicago Tribune round tripper replay shows the home run went around 380 feet to straightaway left field. There now is Andre Dawson. He's had 17 of them this year. 58 RBI. A little bit low. Dawson is hitting 500 against the Phillies in this series. Six out of 12. One out, two in. Cubs lead two to one. Whoa, what a cut. What a cut. And the count has evened up a ball in the strike. <laughs> Don't tell me you're, you're going to smoke a cigar too. No, Steve said you like it when he when he smokes two cigars at once. So I thought I'd like one. <laughs> I gave him one for your comfort in the ball game, Harry. There's a ground ball foul outside third base. Let me ask you again how a guy of your charming disposition can ever play a role of screw. Well, Harry, I don't know. <laughs> I got a lot of personal problems, you know, a lot of psychological difficulties, and I just dwelled, dwelt upon them while I was working. It was it was hard, but I thought of all the troubles that other people have, not for myself. <laughs> I have any, and I I read a lot of books about other people. Oh. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Also, to reading the books you've been reading. <laughs> <laughs> One out, two in. Andre Dawson. What a thrilling start. There's a pitch and he struck him out. Dawson goes down swing. That brings up Rafi Palmero. Comes ahead two to one. Nine baseballs away to a roaring start at Wrigley Field. Bradley homered for the Phillies in the first. Sandberg with one on homered for the Cubs in the first. A couple of trips ago in Philadelphia, Kevin Gross could not make his start. He fell down the stairs at home. So apparently he stuck to the elevators at his hotel here in Chicago, and he's out on the mound. I the noticed he had a little trouble with the incline, though, getting up to the rubber. <laughs> Curry, does it look like rain out there or what? Yeah, there's some uh, storm warnings being issued until midnight. There's a fly ball. My drop, my drop, my drop. Nice play by Mill Thompson and the inning. Two runs, two hits. Nobody left. At the end of one, the Cubs are out in front, two to one. Hi. I've been looking all over for this terrific video cassette I heard about. It's called The All New Not So Great Moments in Sports. There's scenes where Daryl Dawkins renovates NBA backboards. That's a fantastic video. My favorite part is when Billie Jean King turns Bobby Riggs into tennis's court jester. I hear there's a scene where a West German golfer shoots for birdie from a pretty strange place. 
I love it where George Brett calmly disputes his pine tar home run. The all-new not-so-great moments in sports is 45 minutes of the funniest film I've ever seen. Great, so you have it. No store has this version. Now what do I do? You get it free. Let me understand. You don't have the video, but you're going to tell me how to get it free. Right. Am I missing something? You're missing out on Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated? I love SI. What does Sports Illustrated have to do with it? You get the all-new not-so-great moments in sports free with your paid subscription. Oh, I let my subscription run out. Well, now's a perfect time to go for it again. You get 25 weeks of America's best sports coverage, including the pro football preview and the beautiful swimsuit issue. I love that. You even get the big Summer Olympic special issue and the commemorative Olympic pin set. And the all-new not-so-great moments in sports? You get it all. I do. How? Just call Sports Illustrated's toll-free number. Hold on. All that great footage, that video is really worth having. I ought to know. Yeah, I'll bet there is the price of the magazine, right? Uh-uh. It's over 47% off the cover price. Just three monthly installments of $9.89 each. You can even put it on a credit card. No kidding. I get 25 weeks of SI, including the pro football preview, the summer Olympic special issue, Olympic pin set, the swimsuit issue, and the video cassette free. You get it all. Just call 1-800-284-9494. I gotta get to a phone. What's that number again? Here. 1-800-284-9494. Have you heard of a video cassette called the all-new Not So Great Moments in Sports? <laughs> Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field. Charlie O. Finley here for the first night game in Cub history. Charlie, who used to own the Oakland A's, I guess he had the last dynasty in baseball. They won three championships in a row. Lance Parrish. A big guy having a good series. Breaking ball low. I can't even up a ball in the strike. Javin, any repercussions from the uh, little broadcasting you did a year or so ago? Yeah, I think that uh, that Cub game was bigger than any movie or show that I was ever in. More people saw it and more people liked it. And they really said, why don't you get out of show business and get into sports <laughs> broadcasting full time? <laughs> No, I, I, I was one of the most fun things I've ever done. Uh, but you, you guys, we did a wonderful Steve job, and I, Steve and Steve you. Steve and I had a ball when you were here. We drank all your beer. It was I fantastic. Know. It was like, oh, Harry won't be here. We can just finish these. <laughs> Does a ground ball, easy out. Grace has it, one away. But it was cold. It was really cold. Wasn't it? Here's two of the greats of Chicago history. Billy Williams. Hall of Famer throwing out a first ball. And Mr. Cobb, Ernie Bank, Hall of Famer, throwing out the second ball. Look out, look at the perspiration through his jacket. Ernie worked up a sweat getting yeah. ready for that first pitch. I think he did a set with uh, the Temptations in that suit someplace <laughs> before he came. That's why he got so warm. One, nice man, one man out. Here's Charlie James. There's Lydia, who managed the Cubs. A few years ago. Harry, what was that Lee Elias said about the Cub fans? Well, he's a little angry at him. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever hear that tape? Yes, I have that tape, as a matter of fact. All there is the study of a, a studied bleeping of everything he said. Yeah. He was a little unhappy that afternoon. There's Don Zimmer. Well, he's cranky. <laughs> and he, with that Latin blood, when a Latin gets cranky, forget about it. Yeah. Well, one strike did nothing. One out, nobody on. Chris James, a hitter. Inside. I hope he never has anything bad to say about the Philadelphia police force. <laughs> well, you, really go wrong. you think they're bad? Huh? Bad? No, they're just big and freaky, too, the Philly police. <laughs> Did they ever uh, stop you anywhere? Uh, no. Actually, uh, I keep moving to Philadelphia <laughs> quickly. No, I never had any trouble there. Well, the Chicago police used to be cranky. There's a little pop pile. Mark Grace is there. Yeah, but Chicago police are great to their own. If they know you, they're wonderful to you. I think when they first changed their hats and went with that checkered cab motif, they got a lot of insults and they were pretty defensive. Right, one, two. There's Phil Bradley's home run in case you just joined us. Out onto Waveland Avenue. In the moment, you're going to see Ryan Sandberg's with a man on to put the Cubs ahead two to one. There's Bradley circling the bases. One out, nobody on. 
two outs rather. Jordan up there. There's a line drive base hit. Jordan, who's had a great series, five out of 15, lines a single to left center. Jordan has been a very impressive player in this series. Now take a look at Ryan Sandberg taking the ball out of the ballpark on a low fastball. This put the Cubs on top. For those of you who might have thought this was a day game, this is what happened early. All right, two out, one on, and here is Steve Jeltz, the shortstop. Are you guys going to keep replaying that home run for the people at home that are having nervous breakdowns seeing this well, game on at night well, or something that, or what? That's what Arnie uh, really enjoys, and we accommodate him. We let him play it as often as he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> right, Arnie? Yeah, Arnie says, we made you a star. Now be quiet. <laughs> What you ought to really do is play the role of a baseball announcer in a the movie. They're making so many movies about baseball. Well, if I could get my hair to look more like yours and borrow those shades of yours for a few minutes, I might try it. <laughs> I think I might try the restaurant business first, though, Harry. Is it as easy as they say? Oh, it's easier than that. All you got to do is have good health, have great food, and uh, sign a few autographs. And you make yourself a lot of money. But don't you have to do a lot of dishes and stuff? Greasy pots and pans at the end of the night? <laughs> hey, that's where they're behind the ballpark. They're waiting for a home run out there. A lot of them are waiting for a home run. Well, they got two already. And we're only in the second inning at that rate. They're going to the, have a chance at 18 home run balls. I wish the folks at home could have seen your face as you did that math, Harry. That was a beautiful thing to watch. There it is. A base oh, hit boy, that, up the middle. Nice address. By Jeltz, and that will bring up a pretty good hitting pitcher, Kevin Grote, with runners at first and third and two out. Sutcliffe having some difficulty, and Damon Berryhill now going out to talk with him. I don't think Rick is 100% physically, but he decided he was strong enough to go to the mound tonight. He had some back problems early in the year and flared up once again. And there you see the look from our high scoreboard camera. A panoramic view of Wrigley Field on a beautiful night. Have you talked to the blimp piano, Arnie? I wanted Bill Murray to engage the guy in conversation 35,000 feet up in the air. Here is Kevin Gross. Runners first and third. A high pump foul out of play. Well, there's a souvenir. Oh, I saw more people from more places all over the nation today, and they all have good seats. How do these out of town people get them? I don't know, but I think there should be an investigation. <laughs> I think that uh, Mayor Sawyer, acting Mayor Sawyer, should do something about this. <laughs> I mean, Peter Ubroth, the guy who gave away the home field advantage of the San Diego Padres in 1984, gets front row seats. I'm really confused about this. Now the pitch. Swung on. A pop fly. Going to be caught by Dunstan. That'll be an easy out. Throws. Pops to Dunstan. Two hits. No runs. Two left. They go to the bottom of the second. The Cubs are out in front. Two to one.
graceful arch of a washerless accent faucet by Sterling is backed by a 10-year drip-free warranty. Triple chrome plated on brass construction, it conserves 30% more water. At Builder Square for only $44, $54 with spray. Builder Square. The more we sell, the lower the price. The lower the price, the more we sell. Excuse me, Steve Stone, do you really need the neat, natural-looking control you get from Consort Hairspray? Next question. Consort, America's best-selling men's hairspray. That was scary. At least you got out of there. Harry Carey and Steve Stone with Bill Murray. And Rigby Field is the gone the bottom of the second. Comes out in front two to one. There's Van Slaw. Outfield very deep for Law with the wind blowing out. It's going to help the fly ball to left field. Going to hold up the ball to right and right center. This bud for you, Bill. Thanks, Gary. Have you got one for me? <laughs> oh, bless you. And bless your words. The pit. Had a cut. I'm looking at my seats out there. Laying out there. Bob Huber's seats. <laughs> <laughs> they have star mornings, but it looks all right here. Get the five innings in and, and relax a little bit. Kevin Gross on the hill. Damon Berry on deck. A little outside. One ball, one strike. It's the phone. It's the neighbors complaining about the noise. There's a high pop five. Ricky Jordan back. Makes the catch. Dan Rowan is in the left field bleachers, and he has the fella who caught Sandberg's home run. Well, Phil Bradley hit the first nighttime home run, but Ryan Sandberg hit the first Cub nighttime home run, and Mark Lohendorf caught it. How'd you make the play, Mark? Just stuck out my hand, and it landed there. I had my camera in one hand, and the ball landed in the other. You know, you're very fortunate. If Morgana had gotten a rhino out there, I'm sure he would have hit it out of the park. Let's go back to Stephen Harris. Hey, Bill, he looks just like you, you know? I think I saw that Dan Rowan last night. He dances at Chippendales in New York. <laughs> I, know, I recognize the bow tie and the collar. <laughs> One man out. Here's Damian, Damon Berryhill. Fastball in the first strike. Oh, it's a warm night. It's a beautiful night for it. I wish you guys had some parasols. You know, they see the camera. We're all looking pretty bland here. There should be more of a decorative thing. <laughs> Dress up. Yeah. We've got a fantastic one ball, one strike. strike. <clears throat> Gross has been the best Philly pitcher this year. He leads the team in innings pitched and leads the team in strikeouts. He's got a good sweeping breaking ball that he drops down against right handers. There's a drive. Get going, ball. Fair ball. Barry Hill heading for second base with a double. The Cubs are hitting the ball better at night than they were doing in the day. Tenth double of the year for Damon Berryhill, who's staking his claim on the number one catching job. This ball's not a strike. Very light in the corner. You can see the ball all over the field. Yeah. In fact, much better than the daytime. The ball hits off the foul pole, bounces around for a while, and Damon, who came into this one at 280, still hitting the ball hard. Well, Arnie explains it's because the lighting is even. Because of the lighting. Whereas, of course, in the daytime, the shadows from the stands affects the visibility in certain places. All right, here's Dunstan. That's a hat, believe it or not. How about that? The guy's wearing the light towers as a hat. That's something you must have thought of, Bill. 
Well, I, I think it's nice that he, he got a hat that was built in accordance with the original design of the of the of the ballpark. He looks a little lightheaded to me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what ah. he's getting to us up here in the booth, folks. One strike to nothing. Sean Dunstan. I wonder if they still have tickets to get in here, or whether they're just walking around in the in the neighborhood. One of the few times, Harry, there's not plenty of choice seats available. As the pitch outside. One thing about it, if they couldn't get in the ballpark, they can get in a million places in the neighborhood. Murphy's, Cub Scare. Uh, there's yeah. the uh, standing room only crowd. 537 media credentials passed out for this one. Media from all over the country. Twice the amount of the day that Pete Rose was going for Ty Cobb's record. Take a look at that. Media from everywhere. Two balls and a strike. Sean Dunson. Boy, oh, he's become a great shortstop, Bill. Really remarkable play. Bounces and foul. Two and two. One out. He's got a nice, he's got an arm that has a passing gear on it. That's a left field corner camera, one of the 11 that Arnie Harris has at his disposal tonight. That's a good shot from him back of Mike Schmidt. It gives you the feeling of what a third baseman has to deal with. Hey, I got, I forgot to tell you, the search is still on for the ultimate Cub fan, Bun Man, so get your entries in. Here are the clues for the questions for the month of August. First, it fills and empties every inning where brothers of the pine gather and the best seats in the house. The pitch to Dunstan. There's a high fly ball going to be caught. Thompson has it. And there's two away. The clue to the second quiz. He's the king of cheers, numero uno on his team, and a hip of the fan. So get your entry blanks in. Maybe you'll be the winner of these month of August contest and qualify for the grand contest the grand prizes later you can pick up entry blanks wherever Budweiser is sold plenty of action outside the ballpark it was amazing out there it was like there was going to be a public execution the mood outside it was it was kind of scary actually it was it had that last plane out of Saigon feeling public execution you got the thing they were going to hang they were going to hang someone inside here they were really cranked up outside scoreboard looks great at night doesn't it? the two for the Cubs in the first certainly looks good Sutcliffe should have a good shot at Kevin Gross who has problems with left hand hitters because he's a three quarter arm pitcher. He does not come from over the top, and a left-hander gets a good look at the ball all the way. You know Rick's going to be swinging to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Let's see if he can make some contact. They play him fairly deep. Has Arnie got a replay of that home run he hit in the first playoff game, 84? <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, Arnie. Find it. <laughs> it's oh, there's a wild pitch. And Barry Hill has advanced the third mm. with two outs. Ball to the count on Sutcliffe, who is a good hitter. Third wild pitch of the year, and this is a wild one. Damon Berryhill has designs on coming home, but Kevin Gross decides he's going to cover home, and Berryhill has to hold up. Watch it again. From right in back of Mike Schmidt, this is how Mike looked at it. Still looks like a wild pitch from that angle. Well, that's a good camera for that shot, Arnie. You know what you were doing when you got 11 cameras. Chris James is not playing deep in right field, and Sutcliffe could burn him. He's got enough power to hit it over his head. Two balls, no strikes. Ooh! He fouled it out of play. Two balls and a strike. Hey, Bob Jordan, down at my restaurant, I haven't heard the red cash registers ring once. Hey, Governor, how are you? How are you doing? Oh, you look gorgeous. Have a good time, folks. Holy cow. Two balls and a strike. Governor Thompson, who is a great, great rabbit cub fan. He's not rabbit, Harry. That's a very uncommon answer. Consider him in a governor. Bill doesn't mind. Well, well, well. I am rabbit. 
you've had a tough, tough year, haven't you? Well, no, not really. It was an exciting year. Challenging year. And it's not over yet. And it's not over yet. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Now the pitch. Low inside, maybe go around or not. No, ball three. Tell me what's your honest feeling about now at long last the Cubs with lights at Wrigley Field. I think it looks good. I think the Cubs went out of their way to um, make the lights blend in with the structure of the ballpark, and I think that makes a big difference. Yeah. It looks good from down there. Now, if the parking is taken care of for the neighbors, and if the crowd goes home in an orderly fashion, we got it made. Well, I, I can't see why. You know, this is something now that's here, and I think uh, the, the attitude of the people must be, well, it's here. Let's just relax now and enjoy it. I think that's going to happen. I think a week from now you'll think lights had always been here. They won't they won't look funny. We still got the grass the ivy the bricks the greatest ballpark in America and a great team. Now what more do you want. Well I'll tell you what I like especially. First the three two pit. There's a looping foul ball out of play. With 80 percent of the game still to be played in daytime. The, the daytime mystique of the Cubs will be retained with only about 20 percent to be played at night. It gives the Cub fan who does work in the daytime an opportunity as to actually see his team in action. Well it gives Cubs, Cubs fans a choice and I think that's important when you're offering entertainment as the Cubs are choice is important and it makes the Cubs uh, uh, something special after all these years and Chicago is a special baseball town. That's why we fought so hard for the White Sox. Now the pitch low. And such a dual base on ball. Now I'm going to tell you something, Governor. You, you might be much more intelligent. I know you're a better executive, but I don't think you're as funny as Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, we got to get out here, Harry. What's up? We got to get the president out here. Oh, I would love that, you know. Let's go to work on that. I had him on in St. Louis when he was plugging his picture down the winning team. And of course, uh, uh, yeah, I talked to him when I returned last year, and I, oh, that would be a thrill. And anybody, if anybody could do it, you can. Well, I was with him when he was up in Iowa the other day visiting the radio station where he had his first job doing play by play. And if you just see the look in his eyes when he remembers the stories from that era, I think he'd like to do it. So we'll try. Here's the pitch now to Mitch Webster. And the count has evened up a ball and a strike. Well, uh, What's this? Uh, I read a lot of things in the paper. You might be a vice president. Well, I don't know about that. I, it's up to George Bush, but I, I don't think it's likely. I think they'll pick a national political figure to go with the ticket this time. Who do you? Who would you guess if not you? Well, Kemp maybe. Uh, I hear a lot of talk about Dan Quayle, the senator from Indiana, young fellow, good man. There's a lot of good candidates in our party, and so I don't think he'll have any trouble. There's a ground ball to Ricky Jordan. Steps on the bag for the out. So if I was vice president. I couldn't come out here when I wanted to. <laughs> no run. A lot of things you have to give up. One hit, no errors, two men left. At the end of two, the Cubs still lead two to one. Watch Geraldo. <laughs> you never know what to expect. Tomorrow morning at 11 on Channel 9. Hi. Remember when they rolled out the daily game? Pick three numbers, lots of fun. Then came pick four, a little tougher, but much bigger prizes. Well, now there's cash five for thousands and thousands of dollars. Now, cash five is going to seem a little tricky at first, but after about two or three seconds, it's real easy. business running like clockwork just one airline offers hourly service to seven top business centers and back every business day united rededicated to giving you the service you deserve hourly come fly the friendly skies 
your better Buick dealers are turning up the heat during Buick's Summer Sizzler Days. Now get $900 option savings and $500 cash back on Buick Century. Total factory savings up to $1,400. Get 1555 option savings and 400 cash back on Skylark. Total factory savings up to $1,955. Plus buy the all-new Regal with Buick's value option package and save $1,050. But you better hurry while the selection is still great. Buick Summer Sizzler Days for a limited time at your better Buick dealer. See one today. A participating advertiser in Cubs baseball is the Chicago Tribune. A great city deserves a great newspaper. I heard it. And said we would have one for you. Walter Jacobson went crazy. <laughs> Harry Carey, Steve Stone, back at the ballpark. Bill Murray is with us. Governor Thompson. I thought I read where you were with the governors in Cincinnati. I am with the governors in Cincinnati, but I snuck home this afternoon to see the first night game, and I'm going back tonight. And the rest of the governors are jealous. <laughs> I bet they did want to accompany you. Well, they got to see a um, Cincinnati-San Diego game the other night in uh, Cincinnati, but uh, I told all those guys, hey, man, nothing compares <laughs> with Wrigley Field, the Cubs, in the first night game in history. All right, here's Phil Bradley. He hit a home run his first time at bat. He's had a good series, five out of 14. One ball, one strike. Wind hey, is starting to kick up, and yeah. that means that there's a lot of rain around the ballpark. So far, none in evidence here. Hey, Arnie, call your people upstairs and tell them to <laughs> redirect the wind. There's a drive in the right field. Kirby, oh. foul ball. And Bradley continues to hit the ball well here. That was fortunately her foul. Look at the people outside the ballpark. There's more people, Harry, on the roofs than I've ever seen in a day game. Well, that, that'll tell you something about what some of the neighbors think. You know, I don't know which house it was, but somebody rented out his roof for a thousand dollars a night for every one of the night games. And, and they're glad to have it. That's what you call free enterprise. <laughs> well, when I saw the ten dollar parking signs about a mile away, I knew this was a big game. There's a ground ball. The law, he's got it. Easy out. Vance Law throws out Phil Bradley. One away. Hey, Bill. Bill. Are you eligible to vote in the state of Illinois? Uh, there are some words a, where he is. Yeah, I have a pass from Richard J. Daly to, uh, <laughs> that says I can vote uh, three times in any general election. Yeah. Well, we can run you for governor one of these days. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking at the, the clothes that Jim Thompson wears, and I think, uh, actually, <clears throat> yeah, I'm right. not afraid to wear these suspenders. That's right. <laughs> well, I got some even better ones. Oh, good. A shot of Jim's suspenders. What do you think? <laughs> well, tomorrow it's Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Hey, listen, they man, they're coming back. I'm in fashion. Well, yeah, they're coming back. I'm Don't let them kid you. I wear them, too. The Republicans are coming back, too, Jim. No Gosh, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one out, nobody on. Milt Thompson. <laughs> who's four out of ten in the series. The crowd now kind of uh, being alarmed by the... The streaks of lightning you see time. now and then. It was so much fun with him in uh, what was it, Davenport? One, one, one pit. Play by play today. Hi. It is Carco. Yeah. There's the high scoreboard camera showing that picture. Look how the flags are blowing. Harry, the wind has shifted. Now it's blowing out to right. Shouldn't be too long before the rains come. Two balls and the strike. Line drive. Base it. Foul ball. I think you all are the This may be a wrath of God kind of thing. It's sort of a visitation. <laughs> I got Bill Murray loading up our refrigerator with Budweiser. <laughs> Very high price delivery man. Two balls, two strikes. A bouncing ball. Law's peg in time. Two gone. Vance Law throws off Thompson. 
Ninth time at Wrigley Field. That's our high scoreboard camera zooming in on the pitcher's mound in a moment. What was your favorite Cub team, Governor? 69? I think the team that uh, last won the division, yeah. 84. 84. Two men out. It's hard to believe that as great a sports city as this is, that the Cubs haven't won a pennant since 1945. And 1945 was a war year, too. That's probably about uh, three years after I started going to games. I think my first game was when I was six years old, so that would have been uh, 42. Ooh. Oh, boy, look at that win now. I brought my dad tonight. He and I used to sit out in the bleachers. There you the gusts, the swirls of wind and dirt, blowing the dirt all over. There's a high scoreboard camera. Is the scoreboard wavering on him? It's shaky up there. Who's that? Who's handling that camera? Bob Albright. Well, I hope his insurance is well paid. I hope he. I hope he's anchored down out there. Ah, <clears throat> oh, it'll it'll cool. He'll calm down in a minute. I hope. Two out. Again. This is a dust bowl right now. Well into each night, some rain must fall. <laughs> Not before the sixth inning. Yeah. Oh, and one the count. Eric Gregg is trying to clean the dust out of his eyes. Seeing uh, Ernie Banks and Billy Williams and Jack Brickhouse all down on that field, it had to bring back many pleasant cup memories to you. It did. I mean, I go back to guys like Pafco and Cabaretta. And how about the side of Morgana running on the field? What did that make you think of? <laughs> I said send another one. <laughs> one ball, one strike. He swings and he misses. The wind is still blowing very briskly out of the northwest. <laughs> Blowing cross field. Harry, I think they should get a shot of that baseball over in left field before that thing blows onto the field, just so people know what it looks like when it comes into their picture. Oh, I didn't see that. I thought they had the. There's a line drive right center. Samuel can run. He's going for two. Watch out. Andre's throw. Safe. I thought they had all those signs pulled on except the Tarko one. Low Cubs, Big Sky Balloon. I think that's a freelance sign, Harry. <laughs> 25th double of the year for Juan Samuel. He outran the arm of Andre Dawson. There's Mike Schmidt, who's figured in some great slugfest here in Chicago at Rigby Field. A high fastball to Samuel. Every time the Cubs have thrown him a fastball, he's hit it very hard. You can't make a mistake with this man. There's Schmidt. Good fastball. A strike call. One strike to nothing. Two to one in favor of the Cubs. Ball game in the top of the third. Rick Sutcliffe, his father-in-law, his wife Robin's dad, Bob Ross celebrating a birthday tonight. Here's the pitch outside. I don't know whether Bob Ross is here in Chicago or whether he's back in Kansas, the Kansas City area. But at any rate, he's bringing Rick Sutcliffe's lovely wife Robin's dad. So a happy, happy birthday. One ball, one strike. A ground ball. Dunson ought to throw him out. He does. What an arm. One man left on one hip. 
no run. We go to the bottom of the third, two to one in favor of the Cubs. Secretary of State Schultz survives a bombing. Iran and Iraq set the date to cease fire. All the day's news, including full coverage of history at Wrigley Field after the ball game. Youth, a time to race with the wind, to run free. That's only a dream for some kids, but you can help them fight to make that dream come true. Every time you buy Budweiser and Bud Light through Labor Day, you help us make a contribution to the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Look for this display where you buy Bud and Bud Light. And remember, you really make it work. Six reasons why the West was wild. Emilio Estevez. I like these odds. <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland. He looks like trouble. Trouble? I'm a poet. Casey Shimashko. I'm a pugilist. Dermot Mulroney. He ain't all there, is he? Lou Diamond Phillips. We're headed for blood. Charlie Sheen. Saddle up! Young Guns, rated R. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. There's a little more love in a plumpers, cause there's a little more plumpers to love. There's a little more love in a plumpers, cause there's a little more plumpers to love. There's a real difference between Dubuque plumpers and ordinary hot dogs. No kidding. There's a little more love in a plumpers, cause there's a little more plumpers to love. A little more to love. Plumpers from Dubuque. No matter why you're on the road, you can depend on brakes from Meineke. I do. At Meineke, we do brakes. We analyze the whole system, pinpoint the problem, and fix it. That's a really good. Harry Carey back in the ballpark. Here's Ryan Sandler. Jim Fry entertaining a lot of people tonight. Steve Oker. Bob Rehnquist with his family. Marlene Bendick of Orland Park. Dave Colella, manager of the Om Omni Ambassador East, joined the game here. <laughs> Bertha Greenies for Ralph Cut Kennedy. Cut it out! And hello to Steve Sordile of Highland Park, Illinois. Lou Fonseca, the great player of yesteryear, watching the game at Scottsdale. on Sandberg. A happy first anniversary to Brian and Lynn Healy from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Friends of Dennis Fitzsimons of Channel 9. Ball four. Sandberg is on. The Philadelphia bat boy tonight is Ron Ryden, R-Y-D-A-N. He was a successful bidder at the Lupus Foundation of America's Auction in June at the Oak Brook Polo Club. So, Ronald Ryden, the Philadelphia bat boy. Parrish isn't the best thrower around. Let's see if they turn Sandberg loose. Rhino's stolen 16 bases, been caught five times. Grace is a good hit and run man. There's a pitch inside. <clears throat> hey, our Goodyear Blimp Enterprise from Pompano Beach, Florida, at the control is Captain... Richard Daniels of Burbank, California. It's the 62nd consecutive year the Goodyear's appeared at special events like this. Grace takes a strike. Harry, didn't they pull that guy's blimp license a year or two ago? I haven't seen him here tonight, have you? I think he's only supposed to <laughs> operate lighter than air, not operating lighter than air stuff. I think he's just <laughs> supposed to be on planes. <laughs> One, bit, one ball, one strength. Sandberg on. The throw over the first. Ball almost got away. Kevin Gross thinking Sandberg's going. Lee Elia might risk a pitch out here, one and one.
17 for Rhino this year as he makes it in under the bouncing throw from Lance Parrish. Good ball to throw for Parrish, but he can't get a lot on it. Watch it again. There's and another then, angle on it. From our first base dugout. Hey, they're watching the game in Duarte, California. Oh, here you're just saying that. At WGN TV's big party out there. At Carrie Young's house. You know those people? I think they're in the book. Remember what you told me? Duarte, please. Duarte, isn't it? Hey, look at the block. He tagged out, but it'll be a sacrifice. Sandberg reaching third. Well, that was a good idea. He not only had a chance to beat it out for a hit, but he made sure he got Sandberg at third with only one out. So well, Harry Dunn Zimmer was very unhappy with the game yesterday and the fact that the Cubs couldn't get the men over from second to third. He did not talk to the club yesterday. He was too mad. Today there was too much going on to really have a meeting. He says he will have a meeting tomorrow. He didn't like the way the Cubs played the game yesterday and he wants to let them know about it. All right, here now is Dawson, a runner at third. He's shooting for his 59th ribby. Hits his eye. There's a guy, Bill Keith Math Mahaffey from Cucamonga, California. Uh, well, that's believable, because that name is too stupid just to make up. <laughs> that's one of your favorite towns, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Cucamonga. That's right on the fall. <clears throat> the pitch. A little bit inside. This is your Palm Springs crowd that's calling in now, right? <laughs> These are people that owe you money. In exchange for it, you put their name on it. <laughs> no, you don't have a lot of money. You just spend a lot of money. That's well, all. When are you going to call me when you're out that way? I almost made it out there. I was in Las Vegas uh, playing roulette. And a guy comes up and says, excuse me, you know Harry Carey, don't you? He says, I'm a friend of his. I see him regularly. I thought, well, he's just making it up. Five minutes later, he said, excuse me, Harry's on the phone. <laughs> Bill That's Sullivan. illegal to call Las Vegas. You know that. You yeah. To a gambling house. You can't place bets across state line, Harry. Well, listen. <clears throat> when you've been a lifelong friend of Bill Sullivan's, who as many years as, as I have been, you do call out there now and then. Is that his name? He was a nice guy. He, he didn't really mind. Is. I won a little, too. <laughs> you don't suppose he told the guy not to push the pedal. No. I'm afraid they're very bottom line conscious. <laughs> Pittsburgh. Hey, they got our camera inside the scoreboard now. That's look at that view. Right through the panel. You couldn't do that in the daytime. <laughs> Three balls and a strike. On Dawson. Cubs leading. Two to one. There's a bouncing ball. Sandberg holds third. And Andre is thrown out at first. So he failed that time. Two men out. And it's up to Palmero now to drive it in. Last two times he's had an opportunity with two outs. He has driven home the run. Rafael now with 33 RBIs this year. Starting to swing the bat a little more aggressively after a long talk with Joe Altabelli. All right. Sandberg at third. Palmero flat out to center his first time. I think you should just go with Rafe, don't you? Do you think he should call himself Rafe? Right. Yo, Rafe! I mean, it's a lot more, you know, it's got a dangerous edge to it. I like it. <laughs> Raphael is, you expect him to lie on his back and paint something. Well, how about Raffy, though? Isn't that Raffy? Yeah. Oh, you mean the Canadian folk singer for children? <laughs> Harry, your musical tastes leave a little bit to be desired. One ball, no strike. Outside ball. What you know about the moose and the brushing his teeth and all that stuff? No, what's that? <laughs> Two balls, no strike. Are you up uh, on the Canadian music? Canadian music? Yeah, I know their um, their national anthem has the same line in the 13 times. <laughs> it's easier we, to sing, huh? Yeah, we stand on guard. We stand on guard for the and they just keep saying that over and over again. Two balls and a strike. <clears throat> Rafey. Ray, Rafe, Rafey? You Rafe. And I think maybe something like some sort of a tattoo look. Rafe across there. Maybe just on the knuckles. Rafe. R-A-F-E. Yo, Rafe! 
Duval <laughs> Duval 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 yeah, the Raphael thing is, I mean, he's got to have a lot of misspelling when people write him letters. We'll have to rebaptize him. <laughs> Not a bad idea. There's get a through, right drive by Perry! And the Cubs lead three to one. Palmero lined a single past Samuel. And no matter what you call him, it's a big RBI. RBI number 34 for Palmero. He does go out and get this ball. He's hitting the ball out front now, starting to pull the ball, and he drives it by a diving Samuel. <laughs> the 18th game, he's hit safely in. The longest this year by a Cub. There's Vance Law, who previously had the longest hitting streak early this year. He went up through 16 games. But now Palmero has 18. There he goes. Swung and miss. The throw. Mm. He's out trying to steal. One run on one hit. No errors. Nobody left. Dwayne's going to join Steve in a moment. And I'm going to kidnap Bill Murray and take him over to the radio booth for a little bit. Harry Carey from Wrigley Field. At the end of three, the Cubs are out in front. Three to one. This man will have a heart attack in 20 minutes. At first, he'll think it's indigestion, but the pain won't go away. He doesn't want to die. He just hasn't gotten around to the things he's been planning to do. Like lowering his blood pressure and cholesterol, losing weight and exercising instead of passively watching others. Soon he'll catch the end of the game. There'll be no overtime. You can help prevent heart disease. We can tell you how. Brought to you by Unicale. Since 1951, we fueled more NASCAR winners than all other gasolines combined. And we put that same high performance and winning spirit into gasolines for your car. What'd you say we take her for a spin, Murph? Rich. You know, this is Walt Disney World. But so is this. And this. Walt Disney World, a vacation within a vacation. It's the world's greatest resort. This is the year to see the world, Walt Disney World. Speeding in fluids and minerals, supplying energy to working muscles. Nothing cuts through your thirst like Gatorade. Steve Stone and our producer director Artie Harris Dwayne stats with you on a festive night at Wrigley Field moving into the fourth and the Cubs are out in front three to one. They're out in front. Dwayne is celebrating a birthday. What could be better than a birthday under the light. Boy we've Happy got birthday. it tonight. Well thank you very much. Here's Lance Parrish taking a strike. Parrish James and then Jordan. And the fact that you invited all these people to your birthday party is just a testament to your generosity. Just a few intimate friends that's all. <laughs> One strike the count. A swing and a miss. O2 the count here on Parrish. Well, Phil Bradley opened the game with a home run. Ryan Sandberg came back with a two run shot in the bottom of the first, and the Cubs scored again in the third. The O2. Low. A ball, two strikes now. Parrish came into the game hitting only 231, but if you compare his numbers, home runs, runs batted in with other National League catchers, he's been right at the top most of the year. 54 runs batted in. There's a strike call on the outside corner. First strikeout for Rick Sutcliffe. Now we'll go to Bob Jordan over at Harry Carey's restaurant. Bob? Well, the crowd got pretty quiet at the first part of the first inning, but when Ryan Sandberg hit that home run and the bottom of the first they came to life as they still are right now and now things are moving along pretty well here and they're happy and hoping for the best 
We're going to throw it back to you, but that's the way it is here now. A real happy crowd. All right, thank you, Bob. Chris James stepping in. One out, base is empty. There's ball one. Well, it's lively over there, as it is here at Wrigley Field. And you're not the only one, Dwayne, that's celebrating a birthday today. Happy 81st birthday to Vic Priola. Happy 94th birthday to Russell Tyner. Now Vic working the ball game tonight. What a great guy he is. And how about this? Hey, hey. Speaking of great guys, Jack Brickhouse has just joined us here in the booth. There you are, Jack. How are you? Wayne, what a dress code you guys have got now, huh? Things this got a little different. This, be it from here on? this is it. Huh? This is it for tonight. And then that's it for sure. <laughs> Two and all the count on Chris James. One out, base is empty. Ricky Jordan's gonna be next. Now the delivery. And that's in there for a strike. Jack, you were the master of ceremonies before the game here. How was it down there under the lights? Oh, it was something you didn't even pay any attention to from the standpoint of Heat, fellas, because it was such a thrill. Such an exciting feeling to be part of the history of this evening. And I was a little bit blasé about it until about 48 hours ago, and then it began to catch up with me. Boy, I'm, I'm really hyped now. There's a shot out to second, flag down by Sandberg. Great play by Ryan, and the throw to first got him. There's a starring play by Ryan Sandberg. The play was all position. Sandberg playing him up the middle. He's right in front of this hot smash. Does a complete 360. Fires to first. And just barely gets James, who's hustling down the line. Watch it again. How do you like the Hollywood strip we've had tonight so far? First man up for the Cub gets the first Cub hit in nighttime history. Next guy up of all people, Sandberg, one of the most popular of all. A Hollywood type, and he hits a home run. Ricky now Jordan all he takes a strike. Cliff to go the distance, win the game, steal home. You've got the script down, Pat. He did that already. I don't think he's going to steal that. home again this year. <laughs> Look at the rooftops, Jack. Isn't that something? Oh, they're packed. You know, I have a feeling, too, that those folks better not plan to go to sleep for a little while tonight because not only is this game exciting, but when Harry starts to sing and everybody sings with him in the seventh inning, that decibel level is going to wake everybody up. Jack, all the but games. But only for tonight. All the games you did in this park, did you ever think that you'd see lights here? Yes, I did, uh, Steve. I really did. I prophesied it a long time ago, but I had a little more information, perhaps, than a lot of other people because I knew Phil Wrigley's attitude. It wasn't that he was opposed to lights. It wasn't that he said he'd never have lights. He said, I'll try to get along with them as long as I can, but... He even bought the light plant once. Another time, he said he'd play 12 night games at somebody else built a stadium. 2-1 pitch. Sliced into right toward the line. That's going to be in there for extra bases down into the corner. Jordan rounding second and on his way to third and will make it easily. Ricky Jordan with his first triple. It comes with two outs in the fourth. And very quickly, uh, when I was on the board, Phil even suggested maybe we ought to put in lights to finish games here late in the season that sort of thing so his attitude toward lights has been certainly misunderstood and I can't understand why because Wrigley himself was one of the most visionary owners I think baseball has ever known and he would have certainly appreciated a night like tonight oh absolutely I'm positive that if Phil were alive he would have approved lights now and it's going to be great if everybody keeps their word, if the Cubs keep their word, and I know they will, if the city keeps their word about such things as traffic and security and so forth and so on, transportation, and the neighbors around here, even the ones who are opposed, suddenly become neighbors again. Let's, let's look at it this way. 20 years from now, you're going to look around here and you're going to see a new generation that won't even know what it was ever like to not have lights in Wrigley Field. Well, here's Steve Jeltz, runner at third, two gone. And the pitch is low, ball one. And Jack, I think the other thing that's a positive about all this is the fact that a limited number of night games will keep us here at Wrigley Field into the future. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the real purpose of the whole thing. One ball, no strikes. And There's don't a strike. We're still playing 63 of those games, as Ernie would say, in God's own sunshine. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. I think. I think it's the proper combination. The club will be, I think, a little better off not playing in the uh, sunshine, the summer heat. 
all the time. They're going to get a break here and there. That'll help them. Yeah. Everything works out. Well, look, I want to. I'm going down to look in the truck. I want to see if Arnie has a tuxedo on. <laughs> Jack, it's always great to see you, and I know it's a special night for you as well as everybody associated with Chicago baseball. Now let's have a special, a special type of, of surgeons, resurgence by the Cubs, and get over that 500 mark, Stevie. Here, here, and hey, hey, he looks ready. He can suit up. I think so. Uh, All right, Jack. Well, it's wonderful to be here. And it's thank you very much. Great to see you again. You Stevie? look super as always, Wayne. All right. I feel Jack, kind of tacky. Care. Turn that camera off, will you? <laughs> Okay, Jack. All right, Jack Brickhouse, Hall of Fame broadcaster with us. Two balls and a strike to count on Steve Jeltz. Fouled out of play, and that's going to even the count. There's the scorekeeper in the scoreboard. Now there's a great shot. One you're not going to see every day, that's for sure. And that's his perspective on the goings on tonight. Two balls, two strikes. Gerald singled his first time up there. He's not known as a great hitter, but he had a couple hits Saturday and a hit his first time up today. The 2 2 foul out of play. Rick Sutcliffe starting to throw the ball pretty well. He's run into some difficulties with Ricky Jordan. Jordan is a very impressive young hitter. We're starting to hear a little thunder in the background here. We've had rain all around the greater Chicagoland area. Two balls, two strikes so far, not here at the ballpark. And the lighting in the stands, it looks very good. There's a broken bat foul ball up the right side. Of course, they've made some adjustments. From the other night when we had the Cubs care benefit here in the home run hitting contest and the workout. Dwayne, there were some dead spots in the outfield during that night workout. The outfield is beautiful and well lit. No problem seeing anything and no problem seeing Mark Harmon in the booth with us. Mark, you look terrific. Thank you, Steve. How you been? Just great. Nice hat you have. How do you like tonight? Are you kidding? I mean, it's a promo tour to do a movie for Stealing Home, which opens on the 26th, and I couldn't have missed this for anything in the world. And your buddy stole home earlier this year, Rick Sutcliffe. That must have been a surprise to everybody. The, the first one since Jim Hippo Vaughn, <laughs> you know, and I, I haven't let him forget it at all. You remember Hippo Vaughn, don't you? Yeah, he was a good friend of mine. 1919, <laughs> went to high school together. Two balls, two strikes, the count on Jeltz. Two outs, a man at third, and he got him. He struck him out. Now the Phillies are finished in the fourth inning. Second strikeout for Sutcliffe. No runs a hit. Stick around, Mark. We want to talk with you. Bottom of the fourth inning coming up with the Cubs out in front, three to one. This is WGN Television, Chicago's very own Channel 9. You're for Kids Safe Station. What's that? He's got a flashlight. Over there. Good monkey. But I said Bud Light. If you want the one light that outshines them all, ask for Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. It's so hard to get good help. The ultimate in Buick luxury, performance, and style is the magnificent Buick Park Avenue. Now, for a limited time, get $1,000 factory cash back when you buy any new Buick Park Avenue. The selection is great, but these best sellers won't last long. You'll also save up to $400 more on Park Avenues equipped with Buick's value option package. Combined, your savings can add up to $1,400 in one of the world's favorite luxury cars. But hurry, this offer won't last forever. The great American road belongs to Buick. I'm out of here. I gotta go. Don't choke on it. Not a kid. What's he gonna do with the ball? When you get your shot, you gonna be ready? 
What's on sale at Builder Square? Phew, what isn't? Back at Wrigley Field, set to move into the bottom of the fourth inning, but the rain has interrupted play. Now this ball game will be delayed as the ground crew puts the tarp on the infield with the Cubs out in front three to one. Mark Harmon had just joined us in the booth. Mark you've got the new movie coming out it's due when 26th of December Dwayne called Stealing Home entertaining family tragedy with jokes and I hope people go out and enjoy it. And as it turns out you play a minor league baseball player in the Phillies organization <laughs> that's right. Is that right. That's right. He's a he's a guy who's played a little minor league ball. It's not a baseball movie. It's a movie about people in a family and and memories and going back and, and facing those memories. But I'm proud of it and I hope people go to see it. Speaking of family and baseball this night. I mean I can't imagine an opening night in any business being what this night is. I mean it's nice that a publicity trip works into a schedule like this but I, I tell you I mean to be in this capacity crowd to have been over at Murphy's before the game I mean to experience the the, the, the arena which is Chicago baseball and to sit here in Wrigley Field and watch this game. Uh, what an experience. Yeah it's truly unique there's no question about that. Mark why is it that baseball players and professional athletes of all sports seem to relate so very well with actors you think it's the performing end of uh, of uh, both professions because they both are performers. You know Steve I, um, I'm not quite sure I mean I know for me the, 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 the transition from athlete to actor I found as an athlete that I, I never played the game that was a perfect game I always thought I could do better as an actor. I'm excited by the opportunity to wake up in the morning, go out and try to do better every day and get better. And I've done a lot of things. I've sold shoes, sold uh, flowers, you know, sold shower heads. I mean, sold advertising time. And, and it wasn't the same there. You know, as an actor, I have an opportunity to really take some chances and to learn some things and hopefully be different two years from now than I am right now. And I look forward to that. How difficult was it for you at first when you did leave the playing field and you went in front of the camera where in a movie especially you have a chance to make a mistake you can do it again on the field you make a mistake and it's history. Well it, it's nice when you get a chance and they say OK uh, that's a print but we'd like to try it again you get the opportunity to do it again it's a big advantage. But I tell you something you learn something as an athlete as you know you know you get a chance to do it once the pressure is on pressure doesn't mean much to you because you just got to do it that's what you're paid to do that's what you're supposed to do. So I, I recall that kind of opportunity a lot and I look back on those experiences and, and to say that I don't use them is a joke because I do use them all the time. Mark we hear so much about concentration uh, not only in baseball but in our business and your business. How, how is the concentration in relating to maybe a scene and the camera in the movies different than the concentration that an athlete has to come up with. You know Dwayne I, I come out of television you know so to some degree um, sometimes television gets a bad rap and people say hey you know I don't want to do television I don't feel that way I, I, I learned a lot there I, I learned how to do it when you got no time to do it and the pressure's on and, and you just got to do it there's no excuses no time for anything other than getting it done the best you can do it um, before that I learned that as an athlete you know it, it, it doesn't much matter whether the center was short and bringing the ball up to you it matters that you fumbled and, and, and that was an important lesson for me to learn when I was 17 years old. Here we are at Wrigley Field tonight in the bottom of the fourth inning where rain delayed comes are out in front of the Phillies it's a three to one ball game Phillies open with a run in the first Phil Bradley homered the Cubs back with two in the bottom of the first on the Ryan Sandberg home run another run in the third and it's really coming down now. I don't know you think it's going to rain. <laughs> You know, you let, know, me, let me ask you a question. We've the odds for a while. It was raining all over the area except for here. I'm going to ask you a question about Rick Sutcliffe because I know you're very good friends with him. and He's had an interesting career. He came up with such high hopes of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Then he turned around and he got traded here to the Cubs. He won the Cy Young Award and had a great second half of the season after becoming a Cub. Then he became injured and he had a couple of very tough years. During that time when you talked with him, did he ever get down on himself to the point where he ever thought of doing something else or was it in the back of his mind to say I know I got enough left to come back. You know Steve I, I don't believe Rick is the kind of guy who gets down on himself. You know I, I, I believe he's the kind of quality guy that the public sees out there. You know the guy who's you know, spending all the hours donating to charity the guy who who with a sore back goes out there tonight because he believes there's a responsibility to the fans. 
Um, I mean, I know Rick loves playing in Chicago. The best thing that ever happened to him was that a transition from the Dodgers to Cleveland, from Cleveland to the Cubs. I believe he, he feels he has a home here. I know he likes it very much. I know that Robin likes it very much, his wife. And 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 yet I know that under all that, Rick Sutcliffe is probably the, the greatest competitor that I've ever met. And, and, and on top of that, a nice guy, which is hard to do. When you left the field, you had that competitive spirit that every top line athlete has to have to be successful. Do you feel the same way now? I mean, is there a competitiveness about the business you're in now that, that keeps you performing regardless of what you're doing? Well, you know, Steve, I, uh, I like the competition. You know, I grew up liking the competition. And, you, and as an athlete, you learn that that's part of it, and you learn how to enjoy it and have fun doing it. Um, I haven't met a lot of actors who like it, you know, and, 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 and that's okay with me. I don't, I, don't, I don't care how I go about getting a part if it's the right part for me to do. And if that means six other people have turned it down, it doesn't bother me a bit. I mean, the ego is not involved. It's got to do with a competitive edge. It's got to do with, you know, getting opportunities at bat when normally you wouldn't have those opportunities. And, you know, as an athlete, my life was a long shot. As an actor, it has been too, and, and yet that's changing. And so, you know, I, I'm plenty tough underneath, and that comes from being an athlete. But, but aside from all that, I've been pretty lucky, and um, I haven't for a minute thought that luck is anything but earned. You know the uncertainties and that's that's a very interesting point Mark because there's no question uncertainties in athletics you don't know even when you sign a pro contract if you're going to make it to the major leagues you don't know when you sign a letter of intent with a major college that you're going to be the guy out there playing every Saturday and the same thing in acting how do you deal with the uncertainties you're up for a role here you you're a wishing and hoping well I'll tell you something uh, as a uh, as an athlete, I learned uh, very quickly that it's all about the opportunity. I mean, I I was at UCLA at a time when when what I could do best was best looked for. And I mean, heck, I met quarterbacks recently at UCLA that are six feet five inches tall. I'd be sitting on the bench or delivering water now if I was there. And that's the reality of it. As an actor, you know, <clears throat> I had to learn how to wait. And that was not something I was learning to do at all as, as an athlete. I, an athlete, you throw the ball through the tire more times than the next guy. You you were better than the next guy. That's how it worked. As an actor, you got to learn that, that waiting is part of it, that there are less actors at 25 than there were at 20, less at 30 than there were at 25. And you got to wait for that opportunity of somebody to ask you, and then you got to be ready to do it when you get the opportunity. Flashing back, that's something I learned as an athlete. So it kind of all connects. I thought Rick Sutcliffe, getting back to Rick for a moment, said something here the other day. You mentioned Rick and Robin, how they love it here. We've heard all kinds of trade rumors. The Yankees, of course, would apparently need pitching at this point. And Rick's name always comes up. And he said that the club has been so good. That, by the way, there's the jacket that Rick Sutcliffe received. You can see it in the shot in the dugout. <laughs> there you are. That's it. But he said. He said the city of Chicago and the club had been so good to him that if there was a deal pending that would help this club, he would agree to it, even though he would prefer to stay here and finish his career here. Well, you know, look, I, what I know about Rick Sutcliffe, and this goes back to Albuquerque with the Dodger organization, that's, he's a man of his word. He doesn't say what people want him to say. He, he pretty much says it like it is, and if he says that, then I believe that. You know, I... I respect him far more as a person than I do as a ball player, and, and I respect him as a ball player. That says something about you know what I think of him. All right, Mark, we appreciate the visit. Good to see you again. The movie comes out when? Stealing Home. It's uh, in the theaters on August 26th. I hope uh, you both are there. <laughs> we'll be there. You bet. We will indeed. I'll buy the popcorn. All right. <laughs> Good to see you. We're rain delayed here. Good to see you. We're rain delayed here at Wrigley Field. Ball game in the bottom of the fourth inning with the Cubs leading three to one. Let's go to Bob Jordan at Harry Carey's restaurant. Boy, thank you very much, Steve. You can hear we're getting a warm reception from a lot of very happy Cub fans. I'm sorry to say that you guys are wet there, but we're nice and cool and dry here. We're going to talk with some of the Cub fans who've been enjoying the festivities so far. Howard, what are you thinking? Well, Bob, you know, I, I tried to get tickets to the Cubs game. I wasn't able to get one. I think the best place to be now is at Harry Carey's. This is the place to be. I'm a Cubs fan and a Bud man. Yeah. That's the way most of the people are here. 
One of the ladies that we were able to bring over to talk with us is uh, Sheila, is that right? Sheila Hewlin, yes. Let's take a look at her T-shirt, and she's been proud to wear. They were auctioning off some of these tonight for uh, Cubs Care. They had some uh, autographed T-shirts by Andre Dawson and others, sweatshirts, and uh, all of the proceeds from these activities have been going uh, to Cubs Care, a very worthy cause. What are you thinking tonight? Has it been fun? It's been, a, it's been a lot of fun. We had a really good turnout here tonight, and we're all happy with it, and we hope everyone else is having a good time. Well, earlier this evening, uh, the crowd hadn't started coming in yet, so now it's really getting crowded. Yeah, it's the, about the last hour, it's been coming in real steady, and we've been having a lot of fun. Okay. Happy you guys and having fun. All right, let's yeah. talk to some more people. Let's get you in here, pal. All right. Your name? Jim Cravens. Hey, Jim, uh, were you disappointed in not being able to get tickets? No, no, I'd rather be at Harry's. The food's really good and the crowd's excellent. Yeah. Well, right now, the people out at Wrigley Field die. don't seem to be seeing any baseball, yet we're still having fun here. That's right, that's right. They paid 500 bucks. We paid a little less, but this goes to a good cause. Okay, thanks very much. Let's get some more folks in, Jim. Your name, sir? Uh, Alan, Alan Harris. How are you feeling tonight? I feel great. I lived in I lived in Chicago for 14 years. I moved to LA. I just moved back here six months ago, and it's great to be back in Chicago and watching the Cubs do it. All right. Well, let's hope so. They seem to be leading now, and uh, things are going. Uh, we're going to talk to a couple more people. I don't know how much time we have here. Uh, my wife's not at the game. How's that? Where's he at the game? Well, why aren't you he at the game? Get tickets. He gave his, <laughs> his, <laughs> gave his <laughs> tickets to the Little Leaguers. Oh, that's good. That's good. Little, little Leaguer that in the uh, first year out, Bob. Couldn't catch a ball for anything. Caught his first ball, gave him the tickets back in April. Now he's out at the game. What a guy. Well, holy cow, Harry was worried about his cash register ringing here tonight. As I mentioned earlier, during the first inning when the Phillies pulled ahead, uh, it did get kind of quiet, and we didn't hear very many dings, but after Ryan Sandberg pulled the Cubs ahead so far to stay, it seems as though it's good times here now, and everyone's having a nice time. I just wanted to mention also that we've been getting some long-distance calls from Cub fans around the country who've been calling in here to let us know that they're watching us. We had a group from the uh, Howard Bowl in uh, Atlantic, Iowa, about 150 people there, and also the ex-sportsman's cable bar in La Crosse, Wisconsin, are also watching. So uh, people all around the country are picking us up on cable. The festivities seem to really be in full swing right now. This guy loves his mom. Did your mom hear that? You think only cow? Yeah, I want to tell my mother I love her. I want to tell my wife I love her. Okay, this guy loves everybody. That's the way most of the people are here tonight. So we're going to throw it back to you. All right, thank you, Bob. We'll be back to chat with Mayor Eugene Sawyer from the ballpark during our rain delay after these messages. The number one fitness exercise in the world is cross-country skiing. And now it can be duplicated in your home with Easy Glider. Just 20 minutes every other day, an hour a week is all it takes to strengthen and firm all major muscle groups and lose weight aerobically. You'll burn up to 400 calories per workout, plus tone chest, arms and back, calves, thighs and buttocks. Notice the quality construction of the sturdy metal frame. This handsome unit folds down quickly for easy storage. Other ski simulators cost as much as $500, but Easy Glider is just $59.95, and your satisfaction is absolutely guaranteed. Grab the bargain. Call toll free now. To order your Easy Glider, call 1 800 435 8300. Use your credit card to avoid COD charges or send check or money order for $59.95 plus $9 shipping and handling to Easy Glider, Department 72, Canton, Ohio, 44750. We're back at Wrigley Field. Rain delay. It's a three to one ball game. We're attempting to move into the bottom of the fourth inning when the rains came. And Mayor Eugene Sawyer with us in the booth. Mayor, good to see you. It's a great night here. It's been an enjoyable night. I've enjoyed every minute of it. I've been outside the ballpark. I walked around the neighborhood and had an opportunity to talk to people to see how the city's plan is working. It's apparently working very well. They're satisfied. Uh, there might be some minor problems, but we're going to continue to work on it to make sure it's really. Uh, clean so everybody will be happy. Our biggest problem right now is the rain. That's why we brought you in. Can you do anything about this? Uh, you know, I told them earlier I was trying to take the ball, but I didn't have many left, so obviously I failed tonight, but we're going to keep playing. I think it'll go away. Okay. A lot of people in the neighborhood were concerned about safety in the immediate area. How many police officers do you have within four or five blocks of this ballpark? Well, there are over 170 police out here tonight uh, covering the whole area. To make sure that things work well. Crime will be, uh, crime 
So this is a real bad place to get in any trouble tonight. Extremely bad place to do anything but act like a good citizen. I understand you brought up a plaque, and what exactly does it say? Well, this is dedicated to Harry Carey. This is uh, uh, naming Harry Carey Day in Chicago, August 8, 1988. Uh, it's in uh, recognition of all of the good things that Harry has done for the city of Chicago, and particularly for baseball in this city. Harry is a tremendous individual. Alderman Patrick LeVar introduced this ordinance, uh, and many members of the city council, in fact, most of them signed the resolution in honor of Harry. Mayor, Chicago is a great city, a city of any number of great events. This one has to top the list of all the events that you've seen. Do you get the same feel? I, I just can't imagine another event in, in the city having the same build up and the same feel that this one has had. Well, I guess other than the taste of Chicago, this is probably the largest one. The media attention given here tonight has been tremendous. I understand that over 600 reporters here covering this historic occasion in this city. And it's been extremely good for tourism because we get an opportunity to advertise Chicago all over the country. We do with WG in any way, but we get another opportunity for some other stations. Not only, I think, is it a national scope, but an international scope. We have media members from Japan, Europe, as well as Canada, and, of course, the United States. Well, it's excellent. It's good for tourism. I said Chicago is the best kept secret in the world, and we need to advertise a little bit more. So we got a little bit free tonight. We're thankful for it. I know that you've seen this ballpark, obviously, without the lights on, and tonight you come here, and it's a beautiful park. What do you think it looks like with the lights on? Well, it's tremendous. It's extremely, it's really not a lot different. This is daytime uh, at night here. It's, uh, the lights are extremely attractive. Uh, they blend in perfectly with the architecture around the building, and it's illuminated well. It's just a beautiful ballpark anyway. Do you think most of the opposition to lights, now that the lights are here, we know they work, we know there is safety in the neighborhood around the ballpark. Do you see most of the opposition kind of going away and accepting it as the wave of the future? Uh, we would hope that as we move through the next few games that are held here, that the community gets an opportunity to look at what we're doing in the city, that we all work cooperatively together, the city and the, uh, the community, as well as the Cubs, and we all do what we say we're going to do, and I think we'll work, you know, we'll work the problem out. We'll go away, I believe. Mayor, we had uh, Jack Brickhouse in the booth uh, a couple innings ago, and of course Jack, the Hall of Fame broadcaster, was here through the years watching this club play day baseball, and we asked him if, if it was a surprise to him to see the reality of night baseball, and his response was that actually it was not a surprise. Did you ever envision, before the controversy of actually trying to accomplish the reality of lights, did you ever think that you'd see night baseball here? Well, I really never did because I came out here quite frequently to uh, day baseball games. And, of course, I do enjoy baseball in the daytime, but I also enjoy the night. I'm just a baseball fan anyway. I never really thought there would ever be lights here. Never did. And here it is, a reality. And I think, uh, as Steve mentioned uh, a moment ago, the security angle here obviously was a, was a major factor. And that put to rest, I really don't see a major problem long term here. Well, we would hope not. I guess of the other major problem, I think, was parking. And I think we pretty much resolved that with those remote lots and a shuttle service in and out of the ballpark. Uh, that will adequately cover, you know, what the attendance is here. So I'm optimistic. I think it'll work out. I understand that the remote lots filled up rather quickly today, something you didn't anticipate. However, you did handle, what, about 2,000, 2,500 cars all? I don't know the exact number, but uh, I think the lots were half full when the collectors got there, so they <laughs> couldn't collect. The city lost money tonight. So we'll be prepared for this one next time. Uh, we'll get there at uh, 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning, and we'll seal the lots off so they can't come in without being that deep. Yeah, we should mention that lot is available not only for the night games, but some other dates as well. Right, it's available for day games too, I believe, weekend games particularly, and the shuttle service is also there. For a nominal fee of $5, you get to park and to uh, get the shuttle service and ball game. Well, the rain for a moment had let up, but here it comes again. I thought that executive order was working. Now I'm not so sure. Almost did. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to send up a prayer. That works better in all cases. Okay. Mayor Eugene Sawyer with us. We appreciate the visit, and I know that Harry appreciates the proclamation. Thank you. Thanks very much. Enjoy it. Mayor Eugene Sawyer with us here. We're at Wrigley Field, bottom of the fourth inning, a rain delay of oh, about 20 minutes now. With the score, three to one Cubs, we'll break for this. Buy a car from us, and we'll save you $10,000. Make it $20,000. If you can buy for less anywhere else, I'll give you back 10 times the difference. No, make it 100 times. 
At Metro Ford, we won't insult your intelligence with ridiculous promises. But at Metro Ford, your credit is good, and we will sell you the new Ford of your choice with no money down and low monthly payments. Metro Ford, 6455 Southwestern, your no money down, low monthly payment superstore. The winning team. Lynn Marie Hassong started her career by designing a multi-user computer system and then helped write the software. Within three weeks after graduating from DeVry, I could feel my career taking off. At DeVry, you can earn a four-year bachelor's degree in three years. DeVry prepares you to apply and manage current technology. DeVry put my career on track. The fast track. Call now, 1-800-247-7800. DeVry, we're serious about success. We're rain delayed moving into the bottom of the fourth inning from Wrigley Field with the Cubs out in front three to one. Look at this guy. Bob Collins, the number one morning radio personality in town. Hey, hey nice to see that uh, you're dressed for the occasion. What well, happened? It's a, it's a night ball game. And what are you supposed to dress like? Come on. You guys look uh, stony. You look precious. I got to tell you. Well, it's not hot enough up here Woo, with the lights and all. The rain has cooled it off a little bit, but you wouldn't know it up here, would you? You know, it's really nice, though. We have a rain delay, and usually Dwayne and I sit, we talk about the minor leagues, we talk yeah. about other teams, but By the way, there's no end of guests tonight. I'd like to thank you for letting me follow Bill Murray, uh, <laughs> the governor, Mark Harmon, and the mayor. It's what only nice guys. It's only because we have such great confidence in you. <laughs> I'm going to sleep now. It's past my bedtime. Right. What are they telling you? What do you hear from the weather guys? How long is it going to last? We hear that it's going to be raining now, and there's a real good chance that it's going to let up later. Let me talk to you. I'm sick of him. <laughs> you know, for a long time, we were lucky here because the story we had heard, it had rained all over the Chicagoland area yeah. and did not rain here up until, the, obviously, the middle of the fourth inning. Now, you know how confused I get about all these things. What happens... First of all, they're going to stay here till midnight. They aren't going to call this game until they absolutely have to, right? Oh, without question. Yeah, they... Awful. You probably were flirting. No. I like to joke around and have fun, and he gets angry because I get the attention. He's gotten sour as he's gotten older, and I've tried to stay young. At heart. You promised to stay on the wagon. The sacrifices I've made because of that man. He's ruined me with his ego, his philandering, his, 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 his mediocrity. Okay, stop being so dramatic. He's the one that's laid every ingenue in stock. Okay, okay. They, they, they wanted me for screen tests. Yeah, I know. But I, I knew that he'd get up there and he'd flounder around with his expensive haircuts and hairdos and clothes. And he's all show. Now, how can you act when there's nothing inside to come out? She was so beautiful at one time, and he was so dashing. Both of them just full of promise and hopes that never materialized. And the fights and the constant infidelities to prove themselves and blaming each other, it's so sad. They loved the idea of having us kids, but raising us didn't interest them much. But it's impossible to hold it against them. They didn't know anything else. You know, of all of us in the family, you were the one blessed with the true gift. Mm -hmm. My true gift is luck, Mom. I just uh -oh. had a lot of luck for my first show, you know? Well, I've always thought Lee was the one destined for great things. Yes, she is lovely, but she's never your spark. She knows it. She